So I'm going to change the sort of the question here. So we do P, right? Let's let's just go through this. The profit of the company sells from hockey stick is given this. Find the maximum profit that they can make from the sale of the hockey sticks. So really, I mean, obviously you can see that you're not you've got corner points, which is what you test. You've got um, you've got point zero zero. Hang on, yeah. Let me zoom in. Oh, let me get this right. Okay, so you've got point zero zero here. Obviously, you're not going to put in zero zero because that's just a bit silly. Like you're not going to make any money. We've also got, I think, let's just approximate. That's probably about 150. Yeah. Uh, 300. But I mean, you'd be better off selling 200, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you're going to make more money in 300. And then you've also got um, 500 zero. So really, you, you know you're going to just substitute in these two points and see which one's higher for that question. So let's just do that and just work through some of the math to do it. So I think it was the objective function is it's how much money I make and uh, what is it? 62.86, 62, 86. 62, 86. So if you get more for Y, and less for x you probably want to have a bit more y in there which makes sense because you're yeah. still making 500 here and 500 here you're going to make you can just see straight away that it's going to yeah, be high but exactly you, you don't even need to really work through it but we'll work through it just for the the process of understanding why it works so we've got 62 um, times 200 plus we've got 86 times 300 so the profit of that is going to be um 38 200 yeah nice paycheck and the other one's just going to be obviously 62 times 500 now you're going to be what's that 14 short 14 dollars so that's 31,000 for the other one so we've gone um 62 times 500 plus 86 times zero basically and that was 31,000 so you can clearly see that that's going to be a higher one if you did all all the points yeah it does now, if we just rewrite our objective function, okay, um, and we rewrite this, so in terms of y equals mx plus c, so I'll just do it on the CAS. We can easily do that. We can just go, I'll just use it with z, so z equals 62x plus 86y, or you can do it manually, but we're just going to rewrite it in terms of y. Oh, you can do this. <laughs> yeah. So much easier. Okay. Put it to standard, a lot easier. Uh, what do we got? Why have we got Z there? Oh, because I've got, sorry, I've been doing methods. Oh, so okay. it's got things styled as Y. So I can see there that basically um, you've got this rearranged. So it's always clear all variables if you're getting a weird answer. So yeah. I know that my equation is Y equals negative 31X on 43 plus my constant okay and i don't really care about that that's z on 86. what i'm really interested in here when i rearrange my objective function is that's the gradient okay it's yeah. negative 31 on 43. so if you think about that that's rise on run so that would be like i could take 310 and i could also do 430 right which would be here yeah yeah okay i can put a straight line on that Just going to show you something just so I can get to put a straight line on it. Um, bit of app smashing here. Okay, so I'm going to put a line in. And normally what I'll do here, once I've found those two points, is literally get my ruler out and put those on here. Okay? Yeah. So that's my objective function. All right? Now, that's the gradient of my objective function. Now, let's look at this point. Basically, what I'm showing you here is that any point along here will give you the same profit. So let's try and see if we can just choose a couple of points that give us exact values. And I'm going to show you how they all give you the same point, profit. Um, so what this is going to be what? 0, 3, 10, right? Yeah. Can we see any other exact values that kind of go through? This needs to be exactly going through it. Um, at 80. 
80. Oh, is that 10? That's not 10. 20, 30, 40, 50. 30, 20. Ah, that's 320. It should be there. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And what I say it would be for. I was on 40. What was it on? What was on gradient? It's on 43. 43. Yeah. 430. So it should be 430. So I'm way off. Should be down here. Completely stuffed up my scale. Oops. Always get your scale right. So it should be halfway between <laughs> here and I would use a ruler. That should be about there, right? That looks about halfway. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this would be um, 430.0. And yeah, that looks pretty damn good there. Yeah. Let's go with that one. That's going to be like what? 20, I think. 280. Looks like 280. No, that's going to be 40. I've done it again. 40, 280, roughly around there. Okay. You'll find all these values will give you the same. Unfortunately, you can't see much more on the graph. They should give you the same values. So let's just pull up the CAS. So let's just look at the, we have this equation, right? Is our profit, if you remember, yeah. right? So our profit equals this. So really, if we look at 62, how many, I've done no, no, I've done none. We're going to look at this point, plus 310. So if you have 310, that's going to give you 26,600. So the profit of this line, where it is at the moment, Everything along this line is what I'm saying is going to give us 26,600. Yeah. It doesn't matter what point you choose, it should give you that because that's what the line's representing. Um, and I mean, as you now, yeah, we'll just stay with it. So we'll then put in 430.0. So we'll make this 430 for X and none for Y. And you'll see we get exactly the same profit, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is going exactly through it, but it'll be pretty close to it. You know, because I don't know how straight the line is, but it should be pretty close. So we're talking about 40 for X and we're talking about 280, 280 for Y, right? So it's yeah, not far off. As you can see, it's slightly under. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you look at it, it's probably about 100 bucks. You know, it's slightly under. So it needs to go exactly through it to see that exact one. Um, but what I'm trying to show you is that this line gives you the values, any any combination along here will give you the values of that. Yeah, okay. Give you the, will give you the profit of that. So you could even put that line on a CAS, but if you think about it, right, if I now move this up, this line, keep the gradient the same, I now have a higher profit. Yeah. Because now I'm selling, <clears throat> I'm putting in more X and Ys, right? As I move it down, past that point, I'm getting less of a profit. But everything along here gives me the same profit amount. Yeah, okay. So if I go to like 200, you know, that's gonna, this. if this is 200, just say it goes through 200, I now know that this line, <coughs> uh, that's zero, 200 on the Y, right? Uh, that gives me, that's now a line, everything on here is gonna give me 17,200. And yep. that's probably going through, that's probably close to 3, 280, right, for X. So, you know, if we put in 280 here, you'll see that that's pretty, and zero, you can see that's pretty close to it, right? We obviously yeah. need to be exact with the numbers. So once we rearrange this objective function, if you think about what the equation was, and the equation is, um, yeah, uh, y equals, and the gradient was negative 31x on 43 plus z on, I think it was 86, yep. When you think about this, as you move the objective function, because we're keeping the gradient the same, this is really just like changing where your y-intercept is, right? Yeah, exactly. So if we do that, I mean, it's going to go up more and more in value as we move it up higher and higher, right? So, and if you think about like, because that's attached to your objective function, this is where your profit is. So the higher that goes up, in this case, because it's got a negative gradient, the higher the value is going to be for the profit. So yeah. all we're trying to really say here is that Oh, well, my profit for this was, uh, what did we say the profit was? 26,600, right? And we went through 310. Well, obviously then, 
If I put in 26,600 in here, divided by 86, that's going to give me an answer of 310. Um, 26,600 divided by 86. Uh, was it 26,600? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it should have given me a 310. 26,600, it should be 26,600, it's 26,600. I don't know why it's not quite giving it to me. Uh. Ah, yes, because then actually, I need to rearrange it back in terms of Z by itself. Um, no, because that should be the one set when X equals zero, it should be 310. I mean, it's at 309, so I don't know yeah, why it's like like it. off. Should be 310 though. I don't know why it's slightly off. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Um, that's going to bother me now. But <laughs> so anyway, what I'm really trying to get you to understand though is that this line here is really, if you think about it, it has, because we've rewritten like this. And if you just go back to your original profit formula, like profit equals, I think it was, um, what was it? 62x, 62, 62x plus 86y, right? Yep. That's what it was, yep. If you think about this, like it's a bit hard to understand like that, but when we rearrange it in here, this is giving me my gradient of, hey, you know, if you substitute in this or this or this or this or this or this, any of these numbers along here, coordinates, they're going to give you the same profit. Yeah. We've just rearranged it in terms of that to see the line. So if I, when the line's like this, this would give me a different profit, but they all give me the same ones. So that's why I always say, check your first point and your last point. So let's go back to the original question. So the question was, I've got to get this gradient right again. Yep. So the question was to, make this uh, maximum point, right? What does the value of A need to be? Well, at the moment, as you can see, if I increase this, that's gonna be a higher and higher profit, right? Because we've seen it between the two points that we tried before. Yeah. So notice how it, now it hits this corner point. So what you'll yeah. find is that this will give less as a profit than that point. Yeah, so okay. So that would actually be a higher profit than this one but this is the last point it hits that's within the feasible region. So it's still within the feasible region, but that's the last point. So that has to be your maximum profit. So if we look at all these points, you know, if you put them all into the, if we actually look at that other point, so we'll put in, uh, what was it like 150? Do we say it was 150? Yeah, 150, 300. So if you go P equals 62 times 150 plus, 86 times 300, sorry about the room, running out of. You get what I'm saying though? Yeah. Um, so we got, what do we got? 62 times 50, plus 86 times 300. Your profit there is 31. So you can see it's actually higher, right? Yeah. 1,100, but you can also see it by literally rearranging your objective function and you can just slide the gradient as long as you keep the parallel like to you know once you make your first points you can see that oh yeah that makes sense why that this point is higher than that one and then that's your last point right we want to make this our highest point yeah right. to make that our highest point well our objective function needs to be if it was this deep, you're now going to say, oh, it's actually any of these points along here would give me the highest profit. But as soon as right. we go steeper than that, I can go, well, that's actually going to be not as much profit. Oh, that's not going to be as much profit. And see how the last point hits an objective function is this one right down on the corner? Yeah. So it needs to be steeper than that. So I'll, I'll try and do something steeper so it's a bit easier to see. So, you know, you might go, okay, so my gradient needs to be steeper than what? Well, my gradient actually needs to be steeper than this line, right? Doesn't it really? Yeah. 
So, and if you think about it, this has got a negative gradient. So what is the gradient of this line? Well, the gradient of this line is negative one. So it needs yeah. to be more negative than that. So X needs to be less, the gradient needs to be less than negative one. So it needs to be like negative two or negative three or negative four. You with me? Yeah. So if I want my point to be down here, my maximum point, and I have an equation that is, um, if you think about it, it needs to be Y equals, so it was, um, it was profit equals AX plus 86Y, right? And we're saying, what does the value of A need to be for this to be maximum? Well, if you think about it just generally, you know it's going to have to be at least 86. Yeah. Because if they both, why isn't this working? If they both give you, um, I do not know why it's stuck on there. Now it's decided to stay up there. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, because it's an uh, image that I've done. If you think about um, what it is, is this line is, you know, if you sell, uh, is it negative one? I thought it was negative one. Yeah, it is. So if you sell the same amount of X and Y, it doesn't really matter, right? If you're making $86 on each of them, like you yeah. don't care. You could sell 500 and zero, or you could sell 500 and zero, or you could sell 400 and 100, or 200 and 300, or 300 and 200. So can you see it's going to be 86 anyway? Yeah. Okay, but it needs to be, we obviously want for that to be maximum, this needs to be more than 86 bucks because then, you know, that tips it over. But in terms of the actual line that we're thinking about, okay, how are we going to prove that is, and mathematically what we can do is we're going to rearrange it for terms of y. So we've got 86y equals p minus ax. You happy with that? Yeah. So y equals uh, p on 86 minus ax on 86. So now we've written this in terms of y equals mx plus c, right? Our gradient is for our objective function, correct? Yeah. But we want this to be less than negative one, don't we? Yeah. So we want our gradient to be less than negative one. So what Wait, can it be? Can it be equal to? It can be. No, it can't be equal to because we want it to okay. be. Thanks. Yep. Good point. It can't be equal to. It needs to be less than because if it's equal to, then it's the whole line segment. Yep. Okay. So that means negative a is going to be uh, less than negative eighty six if we times out eighty six. Now I'm just going to divide or multiply by negative one. So a needs to be greater than eighty six. Okay. So what I've done there is I said this gradient needs to be less than that, negative one. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does when you so, break it down. Yeah, so that means like if, if that gradient is greater than negative one, well, we know what that point is. But what value of does A need to be? Well, A actually needs to be 86, which kind of makes sense. It needs to be greater than 86, which makes sense to what we're thinking anyway. I so like it's just much harder to like recognize a when it's in the objective function form it's like yeah I not see it at all no but can you see that what we have to do is rearrange it for terms of y and yeah then you go, oh that's the gradient because don't forget this gradient now we're saying well if a is like greater than 86 if you think about it, if it's 86 it's actually going to have a gradient of one negative one whereas if it's greater than that it starts to come around like this whereas if it's less than that it's going to go this way yeah you know what i mean so anything less than 86 would make this the objective function, right? Yep. Um, as soon as it gets to negative dollars, so if it's zero, if A is if A is zero, then you make no money off it, then you could use either of these, which makes sense. But as soon as it gets to, like, just say you lose money on it, then it's going to change it to saying, well, that's the objective function, right? So, and then once that gets too negative, then you're just better off not even manufacturing anything because it just costs you more money than to make anything and that would <laughs> yeah. be like the last one. Um, so that's why you gotta be careful when the gradient is positive on the objective functions. But yeah, I hope that kind of helps with yeah, how yeah, solve sure. it. So yeah, and sometimes I might say, well, what's the value of A if we want the objective function to be on this line? 
And if you want the objective function to be on that line, well, then the, the difference is we find out the only difference is then I don't want it to be less than, I want it to actually be equal to. So that means I've got to still do the same thing, but I want it to equal negative one because I want it to actually be everything on that line. Yep. So that means A would just equal um, 86. Because okay. if it did equal 86, then it would be everything on that line. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah. With it. Um, a bit sure. more. So should we have a look at this question? Yeah. All right, let's look at the next one. The... But this one gives like the maximum profit as 42K. That's fine. The company wants to change the selling price of flick and... Oh, okay. This could be different. The company wants to change the selling pro I just wanted to get you to understand. Yeah, no, that, that was those. really good. Because you run into these objective functions where sometimes they say, hey, we want this actually to be our maximum profit. What's, you know, what values? Yeah. Like I might say, I still want to produce this amount. And if I want to change the price, I sell my um, whatever X is at, what's the most I can charge? Well, the most you could charge would be 86 bucks. Yeah, okay. Because as yeah. soon as it's $86, then the whole line becomes, you know what I mean? Same yep. thing. Um, we'll go to this flick one. So flick and jink hockey sticks in order to increase the maximum profit to 42. Okay, so they want to change, the, this is what we're talking about, change the selling price uh, to increase its maximum profit to 42. All the constraints of the, of the okay, okay, so they remain the same. Profit Q is made from the hockey sticks now give by that. The profit made by that and that. The maximum profit is sold by selling 400 and 100 jink sticks. Okay, so it tells us where it is. Find yep. the value of M and N. So I'm just going to start a new... Oh, we'll go back to this one. So they're saying it is 400 and 100, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's where the maximum profit is, what do we know? We know the... Um the intercept or like the uh the p or the z which is 42k right yes it's 42k what else do we know um well would it just be on the line it, yeah it would be on the line because there's no extra constraints to be introduced so we yeah. actually know that the gradient of the objective function needs to be what uh this negative one right Okay, so we know it needs to be negative one. Yep. So we're going to rearrange this. We know that the profit is 42,000, right? Yep. So we've got 40, whoops, 42,000 equals mx plus my. We know that we're selling, uh, yeah, and we want the gradient to be negative one, right? Yep. So that means that, I mean, there's many ways you can solve this. You can solve it logically or we can solve it using mass. We'll do both ways. So if we um, we know that we're going to sell, yeah, let's just rearrange it in terms of why. Uh, so we'll just do, because I was going to substitute in a value for x, but then we'll lose the gradient. So when the gradient is equal negative 1, so we've got to rearrange this for y. So you can literally just do here 42,000 equals, we can bring up a keyboard, go to variables. So we'll just do M X plus N Y. And we're going to rearrange this for, because it's just going to be a, why would you do it in your head when we can actually yeah. just do it without thinking and we make less mistakes. Okay, let's just make sure we type that out right. MX plus MY. So, okay. So we've got, which is a lot easier, Y equals MX on N. I'd solve it like this, but I'm just going to have a quick crack at something. Probably should have got that way. Okay. So what we know, right, is that we know that the gradient, so M on N needs to equal negative 1, right? Okay, well, if you know M on N is equal negative 1, that means um, M equals negative N, which 
basically, but we know we're selling, uh, how many stocks sticks are we selling? It was 400 and 100. 400 and 100, right? Okay, so if we're selling 400 and 100, the prices of these need to be the same. Yeah. Because it's okay. a negative one, but I'm trying to prove it mathematically. Um, and why does M equal negative N? It must just equal what it is. Okay. Um, let's see how we go. Couldn't you just see them as like, uh, like if you keep it as M on N equals negative one, can't you just see them as being the same value, like regardless? Yeah, but it's negative one. So one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Oh, yeah. Which doesn't make sense though. So I put something in wrong. Uh, M dollars per hockey stick and M dollars per that. So really how I see, how I would do it logically is I'll just really go 42,000. We know we're going to produce 500, right? I would go divided yeah. by 500. So they need to be $84 each. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> like that's how I was going to do it first. But just so you see it as like that's the 500 in total. And then yeah, well, because I know that. And you know they're the same price. I know they're the same price because it's on this line and has a gradient of negative one. Yeah, okay. Right, so it doesn't matter what quantity I make, they're all, they're going to be the same values. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah, so I was going to try and substitute in values, but I mean, logically to me, that's the fastest way I would have gone about it. Yeah. And then I'd just go, well, they're $84 each <laughs> and I would have been like done with. Um, yeah. But I'm trying to mathematically prove it. Um, this is like the way to find out that they equal each other, right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, actually, you already know just from the gradient, I guess. Exactly. You do know from the gradient. Because um, it's on that line, so it could be anywhere on that line. So, M, X, on, I'm just trying to figure this out. Um, I know that that needs to be negative one. So hang on a moment. What I could do here is I could substitute in, how many of the Ys are we making? Was it 400? 400. Uh, no, 100, right? Oh, okay. It was 100, 400, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so you could do 100 equals, uh, well, you know that's going to be negative one, right? That on that has to equal negative one. Yeah. So you could go then, that's going to be negative 400 plus 42000 zero, zero, zero on N. Yeah. Right? So that's going to be 500. So that would then turn into uh, 500N equals 42,000. Yeah. Uh, and then 42,000 divided by 500, which is the same thing. There we go. Now I'm, I am getting there. Equals 84. So you know N equals 84. Um, if you know N equals 84. Ah, I know what I've done wrong. I forgot the negative here. <laughs> had a negative oh, in there the whole time. Yeah. That's where I went wrong. That's where I, I just realized, I'm like, hang on a moment, that should be a negative gradient, and it's not. So where was I? Uh, where are we? Sorry. This, where am I? I must be down here. Yes, that's where I completely stuffed up. So this should be negative here. So that means that's negative. That should equal negative 1. Therefore, M should equal N. That's better. I was wondering why I was stuffing up. So they need to be the same price, right? Yeah, okay. That's so much better. And then I've proved it it's 84. Yeah. Um, so I know that they're the same price. So that's why I can just go 42,000 divided by 500. But if you didn't have them as the same price, you can basically then still substitute in Y, substitute in X. Um, I know that M equals N. So I could have just written this as N as well. Yes. Yeah. Cross cancel oh, out. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah, and then that would leave me with um, negative x, which would be negative 400. Yeah. 
which I, I wrote negative anyway, um, and then add 500 to both sides. That would be uh, times by n. So then you can still get to n equals 84. Yeah, okay. Yep. Oh, don't, that little negative, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but does that kind of make sense? So I yeah, kinda, that's, that's yeah. very good. So there's many ways you can see it, but that's a really difficult concept. Um, sorry to take so long on it, but it is. No, it's good. It takes ages to get your head around what, what, what they're talking about. And the trick there is, to, I suppose that's the point. So, okay, the gradient of my objective function needs to be that, and that's the key information that you're going to start out. So, you know, your gradient would need to equal negative one, like that thing, once yeah. you rearrange your objective function. Awesome. Yeah, they're super challenging. Well done. I'm over there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. What else? Um, that is 